scene for all Africa, free or unfree, will not be forgotten. For Dr. Nkrumah, this is a moment when great plans come true. Leaders and representatives of the government of the African independent states, fellow Africans, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my present duty on behalf of the government and people of Ghana to welcome you, our distinguished guests, to our country. We are deeply grateful and highly honored to have among us such eminent statesmen of free Africa. We hope that your stay in our midst will be happy and enjoyable. And we pray that divine providence will bless and guide our deliberations so that we may arrive at decisions which will be to the mutual benefit of the peace, happiness, and prosperity of our various countries. For long years, men in Africa have hoped for a meeting such as this. And so it's a high point in African history. Had the miseries of our continent ended with the slave trade, we might perhaps have found the means of recovering from the wounds which this system inflicted upon us. But alas, a new misfortune, colonialism, befell us. While the slave trade took away from Africa sheep loads of our people, colonialism enslaved them in their own territories. We repudiate and condemn all forms of racialism. For racialism not only injures those against whom it is used, but warps and perverts the very people who preach and protect it. And when it becomes a guiding principle in the life of any nation, as it has become in some other parts of Africa, then that nation takes its own grave. It is inconceivable that a racial minority will be able forever to maintain its totalitarian domination over an awakened majority. We, the independent states of Africa, seek to eliminate racialism by our own example of a tolerant, multiracial community reflecting the freely expressed will of the people based upon universal adult suffrage. Africa is the last remaining stronghold of colonialism. Unlike Asia, there are on the continent of Africa more dependent territories than independent sovereign nations. Therefore, the free independent states of Africa have a responsibility to hasten the total liberation of Africa. I believe the Prime Minister speaks of the responsibility which the independent states of Africa also feel towards the cause of world peace. He calls for an end to the testing of nuclear weapons. He condemns any plan there may be for using the Sahara as an atomic testing ground. He appeals to the United Nations to halt any such threat to African safety. Today, he says, we are one. An injury to one is an injury to all. From this conference must go out a new message. Hands off Africa. Africa must be free. Prince Sali of Ethiopia brings a special message from his father, the emperor. It is the duty of the great and free nations assembled here today, he declares, to ensure that the weight of Africa's prestige and power is enlisted on the side of peace. As an integral part of Africa, Ethiopia looks back with pride on the role she's played in the history of Africa's development. This conference is thinking not only of the interests and future of its eight members. It is concerned to show the rest of the world that for the African continent a new chapter has begun, a chapter called Equality. 
This wider meaning is underlined by President Tubman of Liberia. The eyes of the world and all Africa are focused upon us and our deliberations at this time. What we do and what we achieve will either reflect credit to the peoples of this continent or justify the assertion that the African is incapable of managing alone his own affairs. I pay a special tribute to the vision and forethought Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Prime Minister of Ghana, for having proposed this conference, the first of its kind in the history of Africa, for the purpose of providing a forum for the free and unfettered exchange of views on any matters which are of interest to individual African states or to all peoples of Africa. The customary atmosphere of Parliament House, one of dignity and responsibility, is emphasized as delegate after delegate speaks of the dominant problems of Africa today. 